Hello, everyone. My name is Riley Dickens, and I'm a consultant at Encryption Consulting. Encryption Consulting covers all the aspects of security concerns, such as data security, key management, and privacy. Today, we will be going over the concept of data masking. We'll start with the introduction and then dive into a more detailed breakdown of this technology, along with its best practices. Now let's start with the introduction. While developing large-scale products, organizations usually take advantage of multiple environments, each serving different purposes, such as development, user acceptance testing, system integration testing, training, and of course, production. Each environment deals with its own data. However, only the production environment deals with end user data. In ideal cases, the production environment contains many security controls and restrictions. However, to develop and test, data is also required. But with the lack of security protocols like those for production, organizations tend not to use the sensitive user data that might contain PII, PHI, and so on. Also, in some cases, third-party contractors might be involved in the development or testing process, making it necessary not to use the actual sensitive data. Data masking allows us to provide these environments with realistic but non-legitimate data. This means the non-production environments receive access to only a model of the actual data. This makes the process seamless with the availability of realistic data but does not compromise integrity and security. Before diving into more detail, let's discuss how many types of data masking techniques there are. Generally, there are two types of data masking, static data masking, or SDM, and dynamic data masking, or DDM. In the case of SDM, the real data is stored in the production database, unaltered, and the mass data is stored in a separate database. For the sake of understanding, let's call it a non-production database, although it could be named anything based on the business planning. The non-prod environments that deal with data are granted access to this non-prod database, and only the production environment gets access to the production database. It is a fairly simple process. First, data is fetched from the production database, then masked and inserted in the non-production database. In the case of DDM, only one database is maintained. That is the production database. However, with proper access control implemented, it only allows the authorized user with valid credentials to fetch, alter, or add data. When any non-prod environment requests data, it does data masking in real time and then returns the masked version of the data. In most cases, it uses a technique called reverse proxy while in other cases, it might use on-the-fly data masking. The type of data masking should be selected based on the size of the organization, scale of the project, infrastructure, and complexity. Other than protecting sensitive production data, data masking also makes the development and testing process hassle-free, since it provides these environments masked but realistic data to work with. This ensures that the security and firm integrity are not compromised. It allows data to be distributed on a need-to-know basis. It also enables firms to outsource or hire third-party contractors. Because of this, it makes all DevOps and automation processes seamless without any data-related hindrances. Data masking is a powerful security tool that has been made mandatory by regulations such as GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, PCI, DSS, and so on. To be compliant, it's important to implement it whenever working with sensitive data. Data masking is an inexpensive and easy to implement control. To correctly implement it, sensitive data is identified. Then the data is categorized based on the context of use. Once that is done, proper access control is provided either to the identified sensitive information or the entire database. As per the requirements, data masking is performed and distributed to the non-prod environment users. The masking process could be achieved in many different techniques. It should be done based on the context of the data. Processes like encryption, character scrambling, deletion, 
variance for numerical data and substitution could be used as per the need and understanding. Data masking is a well-established technique, and there are a few tried and tested good practices for convenience and to obtain the optimal result. Before performing data masking, as discussed previously, data classification should be done. This allows us to exclude the non-sensitive data and to correctly identify all sensitive data. Not all data needs to be masked in the case of large data sets, since it's redundant and unnecessarily increases cost and effort. However, it is important to mask data that might reveal sensitive information. Failure to do so might attract heavy penalties from regulatory bodies. It's a good practice to peer review the data and make sure everything is masked and that no production data is being used in any of the non-production environments. As we discussed, there are multiple ways to mask data, each producing different types of output. It's a good practice to implement multiple masking techniques to make the output more meaningful based on the context. And last but not least, access control. Without this, there's no point in masking data. This concludes our video for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe below. If you're interested in learning more, contact us at encryptionconsulting.com. Thank you.